Hare Krishna. Here we are in Queensbridge Projects, USA. And there's a revolution going on on this planet right now. People are becoming more conscious, more responsible, taking accountability for themselves. Some people might know what this is, and some people might not know what it is. But I have this brother named Sugar Ray here, who's going to explain what we're looking at and why is it significant. Yo, this right here is revolution, you see? This is revolution wind. Take a breath and give thanks. As I look over this garden, right? This urban garden here in Queensbridge Houses, right? This is what we used to know. We used to sow our own food and harvest our own, right, food. Uh, we've gotten so far away from that. And we become dependent on others to feed us, right, and, and, and to give us what is supposed to be good for our souls and nourishing for our bodies. But we become sicker as we've done that, as we've depended on the, the, the rise in markets, right, and supermarkets, right, and these delis and, and, and these quick eating spots, these, you know, uh, chicken spots and, and Chinese restaurants, right, um, as we depend more on them to feed us and, and to grow us, we become sicker, right, we become bigger, but we become sicker. And we so, die younger too. And we die younger. And we die younger, you see. So it's one of my greatest beliefs that to save our people, one of the keys, if not the major key, one of the most important keys is that we get back to urban agriculture, is that we get back to growing our own food, is that we get back to a place of sustainability where we can sustain ourselves. When you look at a garden, what do you see? Some people see just fruits and vegetables. When I look at a garden, I see trade, I see commerce, I see economy, I see education, I see spirituality, I see community when I look at a garden. So when, I look at a, when I'm looking at a garden, I'm seeing that those who operate the garden are on their path to being able to sustain themselves, to being able to do for themselves, to grow their own food. And once you grow in your own food, now maybe you can trade with someone who has fabric. Right? You can trade with someone who, 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 who has some technology skills, technological skills, right? And maybe be able to advance your work or something like that. But yeah, so this is what we're looking at. You know, we're here in Queensbridge on the 40th side of 12th Street and, and, and it's a whole new green revolution going on. And what I learned recently was that nature, New York City Housing Authority, if you are a resident in New York City Housing Authority, it is law that you can grow food in front of your building. You can look it up, find it out. It's people, if you look, if you pay attention, when you travel through urban communities, through housing developments, or it's better known as projects or hoods, you see a lot more urban gardens starting to pop up. You see all people. Right. Uh, let me ask you a question then, not to cut you, but all right, cool. So a person living in the projects, they could grow their own food. But why on earth would I get out of my bed early in the morning, plant some seeds, and try to chase away some crows when I could simply go get some food stamps? Well, because first you want to be sovereign, you want to be free, you want to be independent, you know, um, um, that's freedom and that's liberty, right? When you're dependent on food stamps, you're exactly dependent upon a system. What if the food stamps system shuts down? What if, like, they've done, they've cut food stamps from people? So people who now, who it was a family of four getting X amount of dollars of food stamps and they had to budget it out to buy enough food to feed the family, maybe they have some cousins visiting or some other people, some neighbors who don't have food and they want to feed. But now, when you say you cutting, um, I forgot what the percentage was, but when they cut, I think it was like every $200, they cut like $13 or something like that. Mm. So when you cut money, right, your plans now change. But you were dependent on the system for so long and you've grown accustomed to this way of life, to these X amount of dollars in food stamps every month. Now when they change it, your whole way of life is thrown off. And if you don't know how to adapt and survive, right, then now you can possibly be forced into a state where now you're now hungry. Right, and now you now have to find a way to uh, take from your brother or your sister to feed yourself because you okay. have less now. All right. Well, I also heard that like out of the whole Long Island, Queens has the most fertile soil, mm. and that as you go eastward on Long Island, the soil becomes more thin and more rocky. Mm. So this is actually a good place for growing stuff. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people are talking about beehives and. Bee colony collapse and GMO, Monsanto, and all of that. How do bees play a part of this whole well, ecological system? Well, the bees, the bees, the bees are like our saviors. You know, the bees, and, as well as the other insects, but the bee is one of the most important, if not the most important, as it has the faculty in its genetic makeup to pollinate many flowers, right, and translate and, and transport pollen from one to the next to produce seed, to produce fruit, 
right? So that we can eat, so we can have something nourishing for the body. So now when the bees die, right, as they're dying and as we continue to kill them, because it's people that's killing the bees with what we do to the atmosphere and everything like that, right? So if we as a people continue to kill the bees, then our flowers, right, will not be able to pollinate. A lot of flowers. Some will because there are other insects who pollinate, right? But many won't. And mm -hmm. it'll, it'll, it'll be a gradual effect as time goes on. It'll be less pollination and less pollination. So, so, okay, do you suggest that we, like, I don't know, reach out to the city, to the mayor, and suggest that he also allows for some urban bee farming as definitely, well? Definitely, definitely, Um As a community, as a community, as a city, and as people who care and have the knowledge, right, we have to present it to the authority figures who can legally make those adjustments saying that if it's necessary to have bees, to okay. pollinate food, right? Flowers to see, to fruit to seed, right? If that's necessary, and if people in the urban community are now growing food, then it's only right that they can keep bees. Okay, and now, you can sell honey. You can sell honey. Bees, wax. Everybody right? wants dreadlocks now. And so again, that's it. we're talking about economical development, right? We're talking about education, right? We're talking about ecology, ecosystem, saving the ecosystem. It's so much we're talking about. Getting in about. touch with nature. So we almost touch in the spirit realm <sighs> with see. these aspects from seed. You know? It's, it's my belief that when we study plants, we study ourselves. And once we learn more about plants, we learn more about ourselves because what is the difference between me and the plant? It's interesting you should mention that because there's a book called Srimad Bhagavatam. Mm. And it indicates that on the time scale of millions of years ago, when the atmosphere of the planet was different, people were actually a different hue. Mm. They weren't even brown mm. like we are now. Mm. They were actually uh photosynthetic life forms that we mm. used to actually draw our energy directly from the sun mm -hmm. and there's some sure. who would even go as far to say as our skin was green mm. now it sounds far-fetched but when you go to egypt mm. and you go through the back doors of the temple mm. they'll show you ancient people mm. green bodies mm. Mm -hmm. And they were photosynthetic life forms for what it's worth, you know. So no, I mean, definitely, it makes, it's it talking about sense. yourself. Chlorophyll is a form of melanin. It's a form of melanin, totally. You know? Right. So, um, you see, but <clears throat> I want to get back to the flower and the, and the human. Um, when we're in a garden, it's, it's, it's something that happens to our spirit. It's something that recognizes itself in dealing with the, in dealing with uh, soil. Right, what we would call dirt, and and, and, and and these seeds, and these stems, and these roots, and what we call flowers and plants and, and things like that. Right, that it's a it's a it's a spiritual. I would like to say uh, I don't want to say awakening, but it's something that happens to the spirit that just calms the spirit when we deal with nature. And I believe that's because this, that's the spirit recognizing itself and saying it's okay to be calm, be easy. You're at home. You're at home. Um, and I believe that in order to save our people, especially here in America and really around the world, we got to definitely get back into gardening, into urban agriculture. Good, good. Yeah. Now, we got about two minutes left on this video. Mm -hmm. Quickly, who is Anandi Premla? Oh, man, she's a powerful sister. What brother. is she doing? What is so special? Why should I look her up on Twitter or why should I add her as Anandi, a friend on Facebook? Anandi, Anandi has took the initiative within her community and she's sparked. What community is that? Uh, she's in Richmond Hill. Okay. Richmond Hills, Ozone Park area. She has not only sparked conversation, but has sparked action amongst many people across the country, and I'm sure across the world, um, um, people of color, to get into urban gardening. And to not so much, to not always wait for uh, the authorities to give you the okay. Okay. Right? She's a guerrilla gardener. Okay, right? okay. She's, she's done some guerrilla gardening in her life, but she runs an um, organization called Sustainable Queens. It's really a movement, you know, and it's about working towards making the whole borough of Queens sustainable. Every community is sustainable in Queens. Every community hmm. is growing full. We got the soil for it. We got the soil, they're growing full, and within the community have businesses that allow for trade, and they have uh, their own market, their health market, and things like that. So Anandi is doing something truly revolutionary. Uh, she's a fellow farm school student. You know, um, she's one year ahead of me, shout out to her. She's doing phenomenal work, you know, um, on so many levels, on so many levels. She actually has a tree giveaway coming up soon. Okay, uh, I th so I, I think next weekend. What we can do, I'll post the you you hit me with the links to mm. all of her activities, your activities mm. pertaining to the to the Echo Revolution, the Green Revolution, and I'll put it in the, the description mm. to this video. We'll do. All right. So um, with that said, in in closing, because we're running up on ten minutes, mm -hmm. Sri Prabhupada in the '60s and '70s used to tell his followers that, listen, you people got to buy your own land, get mm. your own land, protect some cows. Mm. 
but he mainly told us to grow flowers, fruits, and grains. In order to have ample flowers, fruits, and grains, you also need bees. Bees, definitely. You know, and if you protect the cow, remember, a vegetarian diet is actually boring when it's devoid of any dairy products. When I say dairy, I don't mean eggs, but I mean natural milk, not store-bought cow's milk. Because that stuff is actually poison. But, you know, that's a whole nother video. But, I say, that's a whole other right, video. Right, right. I don't want to go too deep. But some the, people would even say, like, I would even say, why is the human the only species that drinks the milk of another species? Fair enough. But that, the, And likewise, I could also say, why is the human the only species who walks upright on two feet, uh -huh. whereas other animals uh -huh. are vertical uh -huh. or, or horizontal life forms? Uh -huh. So they are, in an aspect, because they are horizontal, they represent... The part of nature that is enjoyed mm -hmm. whereas man represents an aspect of God mm -hmm. who is the enjoyer that's mm -hmm. the difference between the word property and perusa but we're not gonna go too yeah, deep definitely. into that let's just put it like this with a little dairy you can take 10 vegetables and grains and turn them into thousands mm -hmm. of different kinds of foods so I see the importance for protecting the cow plus she's defenseless and she is merciful on those of us who do choose to continue to consume her milk her milk after our own mother would stop feeding us milk. So you could still get the flesh and the blood of the cow in a peaceful way. And we just call that milk. But you know what I'm saying? That'll be a part two. You know what I'm saying? Yo, yo, yeah. yo, yo, yo I'm sustainability, man. Eco revolution, green revolution, man. Shout out to my brother Bakta Caprice, man. Yo. Yo, stay up. Hare Krishna. Queensbridge. Yeah. Place where stars are born.